everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, Pete Wright, and everyone else. Are you? How are uh, you? I'm so good. I'm so Yay. good. I'm feeling strong. <laughs> My kung fu is strong. It's too hot outside, uh, and yet I'm I'm still feeling very good about things. Awesome. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm focused. I'm You're feeling, focused. I'm feeling focused. That's always a good it's thing. It's always a good thing. And so we're going to talk more about focus today. It's a focus follow-up. It's a focus follow-up. Yeah, it's, a, it's mm-hmm. an FFU. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, before we In get nice into way. the details of the FFU today, though, <laughs> yeah. uh, head over to TakeControlADHD.com and get to know us a bit better. You can listen to the show right there. You can subscribe for free in iTunes or your podcast uh, application of choice. And find us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And please call us. Leave us a voicemail at 503-664-4ADD. Get your voice, your thoughts, your questions on this show. And this is a follow-up show. I don't think anybody actually called us. We got a lot of follow-up, but nobody actually uh, willing to put their voice on the air. Is that right? No, no. That makes me they sad. Were all that written makes in. me feel yeah. sad and weak. Written in. Does that make sense? Is that right? Written, written in. in. They yes. wrote in. Yes. They wrote in. They, ri- yeah. they, written, mm-hmm. they, written, they written us. <laughs> That's right. Uh, that's what they did. That's right. Which is all good too. We'll take that as well. But yes, d- definitely. If you want to call, you can certainly call. That's right. Leave we want to. We want to hear you. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. It's always fun. Um, so we're talking about follow up. We actually, I have one non. I think it's a non follow up related uh, bit of follow up. Non focus. Non FFU related <laughs> follow up. Uh, and this is from Jordan Gamble. This was uh, a friend of the show, Jordan Gamble. We've talked about Jordan's comments before, um, and he actually recommends an app. So this is sort of a, a follow-up to the picture that I took and posted on the site of the joke that my daughter did to my wife for her clock. Yes. So this is referring to this clock, our kitchen clock, and my daughter put these pie slices of, you know, that point to various times around the corner of the clock for when my wife needs to be making her breakfast, making her coffee, getting out the door when she's late, etc. So that's on the site at TakeControlADHD.com. And so Jordan then uh, came back. He said, I think this is your idea to put pie slices on a clock is similar to this. And I thought I would share timer for kids, visual task countdown for preschool, children, family and friends help in chore daily activities and morning routines by idea number four E idea Mm -hmm. for E. So we'll put a link to the show or to the uh, app in the website, but it's a really cool, very similar kind of concept, but on a digital thing. So if your kids have iPod touches or, or, uh, you know, old iPhones, uh, you can actually download this little app and it gives you that same sense of visual time around activities. And I think it's a really cool concept. So uh, thank you, Jordan, for uh, writing that in. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and actually, I can tie this in to uh, the next person that I want to talk about because one of his favorite ideas from the show is getting that big clock and coloring in the time periods, what you were just talking oh, about. Oh, that's so, this, so fun. This was like, that was a hit, Pete, right? Like, wow. people really like that idea. It, it nice really, job. I'm so glad to hear it. <laughs> I'm glad it sticks. It really, uh, it is really fun. That's great. That's good. Well, I have a follow-up from the online shopping um, show that we did, and this comes from Chase, and he emailed me and actually gave me a lot of different ideas and and different things that he's done um, to kind of keep him focused. And I'm only going to share a couple on the show because I also have another person that I want to address too, but I, I picked two of my favorite ideas that he had um, about staying focused and and just some things that might help some people out that we um, kind of mentioned, but not really. So some new ideas. Excellent. What do you think? You ready? I am ready. All right, great. Well, the the first one that he talked about was turning off online notifications, um, unsubscribe from spam. Now, I see those as two kind of different things, and you can tell me, Pete, if I'm wrong or not. Um, The online notifications, I'm kind of thinking, keeps you focused just to stay on the site that you're on versus everything else that could be going on in your computer. That's how I interpret it. Yeah, Um, and you know what? In in most new browsers, like there is a new um, uh, extension that developers, Uh, web developers can make use of when you go to a site when you visit a site sometimes you get a little pop-up that says um uh, that says this site would like to send you notifications right always 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 say no no. to that (laughs) saying if you're listening to this show you are not a candidate for those notifications (laughs) let me just tell you say no 
<laughs> there is no, no, no reason no to have yet, yet another inbox be your browser. That is insanity. If you, you know, if you use Gmail in the web, you can manually go in and turn on uh, notifications for that website. But don't let like the Vogue and Vanity and Washington Post and Amazon, they all want to send uh, notifications to your browser. Do not let them do it. There you yeah, go. That That's, would be distracting yes. for sure. Well, and when he says unsubscribe from spam, um, I also take that as the, the subscriptions to your favorite stores. Like, you know, they'll put you automatically on their email address. Or if you order anything from one of your favorite stores because they have your email, you automatically get subscribed to their email address. And I noticed that uh, there was a few different stores that I like and I shop at, but I don't want emails from them every single day. And so there's a couple of things that you can do. One is if you, you know, unsubscribe altogether and just don't get them because then you're not tempted, right? You're not going to see the upcoming sale. Um, you're only going to buy when you need to buy. So that would be, you know, one option. Um, but the other option is if you don't want to go all in and go away from it completely is to, you go into your preferences and many of them will say, you know, do you want just a once a week or monthly, um, email and, and you can choose that. And that tended for me, that worked because I could still see what was going on, but not be, um, getting these emails every you're, single day that I was deleting anyway. You're talking about preferences, not on your computer, but preferences on the company's website for you, for their yeah. mailing behavior for you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and that was something that we didn't bring up before, but I thought it was a really good point that, um, you know, if you shop online a lot to really kind of consider these emails, like, are they useful for you or are they getting you in more trouble? Yeah. You know? And, and so. I think about that, like for you, for your behavior, are there, what are the, the like store or like shopping experience emails that you keep? Are there any that you actually get and, and inten intentionally keep access in your inbox? Well, there were, there are, um, Kings Lane is like a home, a home shopping type of online, um, mm -hmm company, whatever. And it's only <laughs> online, right? So it's not like something you can get at the mall. So I do keep theirs once a week. Wayfair is another one that I keep once a week. What is it? What is um, it about those that, that cause you to say, yes, I want to keep those? Honestly, because it, they are really, truly just online stores. They're not stores that I can just go to the mall. So like I used to be a big uh, shopper at Ann Taylor, love Ann Taylor, still love Ann Taylor, but I could go to Ann Taylor in the shopping, you know, in the shopping mall where I don't need to have emails from them all the time. So I, I eliminated them, um, but I kept the ones that, that were online, but I only have them come once a week because they will come daily and it's annoying. Yeah. It's, it's tricky. I, you know, for me, I, I get certain like Amazon is one that I actually really love because Amazon lets you, ha lets you really fine tune the control of what emails, what content you get in, in mm -hmm. email from them. And I, you know, we're, we're prime members. We do much of our shopping, our home shopping on Amazon. And so I like to be notified of certain deals, et cetera. Um, but that is about it. And you have to think about it in terms of your value to this retail establishment, right? By signing up to one of these mailing lists, you become a little nugget of gold, right? These mm -hmm. email lists for these companies are their gold lists. They love to grow these lists. And the bigger they grow these lists, the greater the incentive they have to use these lists because people who receive emails generally are their most active purchasers. And so it's you you become a tool when you give them permission to email you. And so you got to be really conscientious about, you know, what what am I giving up? What am I doing when I become a little nugget of gold, a little ducat in their bag <laughs> of email? Like, I really think of it that way. Who am I giving yeah. my allegiance to by giving them access to my attention? And yeah. uh, so that uh, anyway, that very helpful, very helpful. To, well, and I think that that's probably going back to your original question. The reason why I keep the ones for that are home products, you know, like the the home stores, is because there is an interest level f for me to to look at those, right? I mean, oh, okay, well they have an organizing section, you know, today, yeah. or they have like this kitchen section today, or you know, with the summer they'll have an outdoor section, and it's like, oh, I want to see what's there, and so there is an interest level, so. Um, I think that has a lot to do with yeah, it where the yeah. other like stores that are like clothes and things like that, I tend to just ignore because it's like, I don't care. They always have discounts. I mean, it's you know, very rarely do they not have a discount going on. Right, right. Um, so anyway, good stuff. Yes. Very good tip.
So I thought that was a good, yeah, yeah. good, um, good thing to remember. And then the second thing that, that really caught my interest in his email, um, was his tip of don't tell yourself you can return it later. This is a killer. Um, amen. And you know, it's interesting because we talk about, or in the original show, if I remember correctly, um, I do use this as a way to make a decision. You know, if you know what the return policy is, that may help you make a decision. But I think he brings up a really good point that the likelihood of anyone actually returning anything is so slim. Um, and I'll just read to you what he says. You will buy more if you think that it will be easy to return, but you probably won't return it. It is never easy to return anything because you have to go online, figure it out, box it up, package it, etc. There are just too many opportunities to get sidetracked along the way in the return process. Only buy things you want and need. If unsure, don't buy. Returning things takes energy. It's one of those tasks that never makes the priority list. And so you off, so, so you often, excuse me, end up keeping things you never wanted in the first place because the 30 day return period expires. And it's so true. I mean, yeah. he is definitely, definitely telling the truth here. Um, so I, I think that's something to keep in mind. I think it is really dangerous for people who use the return policy as a shopping tool. Oh, right. right. Versus yeah. using the return policy for what it's intended for, right? If I go yeah. out and I buy something and my intention is to use it and it functionally doesn't work, then I'm more inclined to use the return policy, right? I right. would buy it or buy a replacement of that object that actually does work for me. Uh, but boy, if you treat it as a tool for, gosh, I just want to see, I don't, I don't really need it, but I, I just kind of want to see if it works. Maybe I'll grow into it or I'll like it down the road. That's the really the wrong reason. He's absolutely right. That's a, that's a great. Point. And that's a great distinction there too, Pete. I mean, I think just to, to add on to that for sure, you know, that difference of, of using it for what it's really there for, because then it's, then it's probably worth the energy at that point. You know, like you said, then I will return it. I will get a different one. Because think of it like um, the litmus test becomes if if I buy this thing and it doesn't work, am I then likely to go out and buy a different one that does work? Right. If I'm yeah. not likely to do that, then I'm I am using the then I'm I'm using the return policy as a way to um you know to rationalize my shopping habits. Absolutely. But if I'm yeah. just as likely to go shopping again to find the thing that does work, then I also am likely to have put the energy into returning the thing that I just And bought. it's something you really need. Yeah, it's right. something it's you really something need. You, you want to really... make that right. Absolutely. So anyway, great um, additions. Thank you, Chase, so much for writing in and giving us your um, your thoughts. I, I thought that was really great. So that is that for the, the online shopping. And then um, let's see, gosh, a couple weeks ago, I, I received a question from um, a listener. Her name is Kim. And this is what she had to say. She said, love the show, long time listener. I love that. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Long time. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. And her question is, I'm great at hyper-focus, but as I have project projects or areas of focus, all routines and systems tend to fall apart. For example, I'm working on menu planning, but housework suffered. Or if I focus on decluttering, my food planning and daily routines fall apart. I, wo I work from home, so if I hyper-focus on cleaning, work suffers and vice versa. What are tips for balancing when you hyper-focus? Many thanks. So before we, you, cause I have a couple of tips and I'm really interested to hear what you have to say, Pete, but I, I just first want to acknowledge her, um, that she sees what's going on. And I, you know, I've, I've said this before and, uh, I'll say it again. Awareness is always that first step of change. So if you see a behavior that you're doing or something that's happening that you don't like being aware of it, acknowledging it, that's your first step. So kudos to you, Kim, for, for seeing that this is happening. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Pete, what do you think? Hold on a second. I, the, the one w word that comes for me, the, the one saving grace for me is alarms. Alarms, alarms, <laughs> alarms, alarms, alarms. Alarms from different devices. Don't count on one alarm. Alarms from computers, alarms from phones. Set alarms and alarms for those alarms. That helps me out of the hyper-focus 
uh, darkness because you're absolutely right, Kim. Oh my goodness, do I ever resonate with this. If I get into one thing, I can be working on it like Superman, but the rest of my life falls apart and suddenly I'm not wearing pants. Like it's, <laughs> it, it just falls apart. And so I think it's really important also to have different uh, uh, alarms. You know, you want to have alarms that, that, really alert you uh in a way that that is different than the one like for example you wake up to in the morning this is like my i was looking for the the one it's not going to play on my computer because it's on my phone but it's the uh, uh, like nuclear radiation leak alarm like Uh i use that a lot during the day because it it's it's something that really helps me out. So for me, it, it is just about if I'm if I know there's a risk of hyper focusing, I have to take stock and say, how long do I really want to allow myself to do this next this next job? Mm-hmm. Whatever this next thing is, if it's meal planning, what I really before I start, I have to to have that muscle that says, I'm only gonna give this 20 minutes. And I'm going to set mm-hmm. alarms that alert me because I will lose track of time at the mm-hmm. end of that 20 minutes. So that's my first one, but I don't want to monopolize. So what, what are yours? Well, I do. I think that's awesome because I asked my husband this question um, before before we started the show. I, I wanted to get his input because he has a little bit of a problem with this as well. And so <laughs> I wanted to know. That's funny. His... You married into the ADHD. That's awesome. I, Yes. So I wanted to know, like, how, how, what would he do in the situation? And he said the exact same thing. He's like, I have my alarm. Yeah, you <laughs> I have, have my phone to have alarm. external stimulus. If that is, if, if I had, if I had a robot hand that I could wear in a sling on my back, that all it did was at cert, at, at every 15 minutes, it just poked me. Like I, <laughs> that would make, I would make use of that. That is a tool that yeah. I would, somebody invent that for us. Like that would be so helpful. So. Well, and I thought it was really funny because he said, well, you know, I have an alarm to pick up the kids and I never forgot the kids yep. <laughs> at all this year. And now that it's the summertime. <laughs> I love how he qualifies then, this year. Yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We won't go into that. <laughs> um, so, but yes, he has not forgotten the kids and he was very proud of that. And he was proud for the fact that it's summertime and he still has the alarm go off at 2.20 to remind him to go get the kids, even though there are no kids to get because they're here (laughs) at home. Um, But then it was funny because he's like, but you know, I'm going to need to have a, I'm going to have to have a different alarm to remind me when the kids are really back at school. Like I'm going to have to have a different alarm to have this alarm go off. That's right. Yeah. So anyway, he was saying the same thing. I think that's an important one. You have to change it. You have to change that sensory experience or you will acclimate to it. And that's really dangerous. So, you know, the, the challenge is not the, for me, it's not the, the act of having alarms. And I, I toss that out as a recommendation, but the, the, the more difficult thing is to, uh, to really get yourself to set them. Right. Oh, to set to them. get yeah. really yeah. good at setting them because, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure Kim would resonate with this. When you find you are in a some sort of a hyper focused state, it's usually at the end of it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You you feel like, oh my god, I just totally lost track of time. I just blacked out for practically for two hours, and here I am uh, now, and I've been hyper focusing on menu planning, and I haven't done anything. And I was so focused, just I, I slipped so easily into the hyper focus mentality that I never even thought about setting my alarm. Right. Yeah. So just getting it set in the first. Well, and that actually, I think what where I would add is setting the intention. And you mentioned this. Yeah. You said, okay, if I'm going to spend 20 minutes on meal planning, and then I need to have an alarm. So what you're saying is, I need to make sure that you are setting the alarm. Your intention is to is to spend 20 minutes on it, and then have another alarm to tell you when it's over. And um, that would be my my key tip is that you know she uses the word balance, yeah. and I think that that. That's a really important word to to consider when you're talking about balance. You're wanting balance. You don't want to just hyper focus on one thing. Yeah. So, what is your intention for your time? You know, you want to spend 30 minutes on this. Do you want to spend 45 minutes? And then, like you said, setting the alarm before and after. Um, and so, I think that intention is is huge. Now, it does take a little bit of planning and effort. And so, again, going back to awareness. If there's if this behavior is something you want to change, then just putting a little bit of um, planning into it and setting more of an intention, then you're going to see more of a balance, which is exactly what she's, I think, hoping to get. Yeah, I think that's really true. And make no mistake about it. It's really hard to do. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, is it really is. hard to do it. It's a muscle like anything else. 
that you just you have to get better at and you have to figure out whatever system works for you to do it but but I, I, you know, for me, external stimulus, whether it's alarms mm-hmm. throughout the house, whatever it is, having something that alerts you to change modes mm-hmm. is huge. Well, and you can use people too, yeah. you know, I mean, if you've got your partner or spouse or somebody at home, you know, let them know what's going on. Okay. I'm spending a half hour on, you know, shopping online. And then I, and I think this was one of our tips in, in that show. I need you to come in at 1230 and tell me to stop or at least say something to me. So you, you know, you can use alarms, but you can also use people, yes. which can be really useful yeah, too. Yeah. That's, I, yeah. I think that's why, I mean, I, I feel like that's the important part, right? It's that external part. Uh, you know, that, that if you have a tendency to hyper-focus, you also are, have a distinct inability to uh, meter your own time and energy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Very good. Well, I would be curious to know if other people have other suggestions or ideas and things that work for them too. So this would be a great opportunity to write back in or leave us a message. Absolutely. Focus and ADHD, it's not just, you know, a two show thing. (laughs) (laughs) We we could talk about it for hours. I thought we were done. (laughs) I don't think so. I don't think we'll ever be done, Pete, right? Here's hoping. And (laughs) very, very special thanks to listener Kim and Chase and Jordan. Yes, uh, you, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much. And uh, I, I think that's all we've got this week. So that's it. Yeah, that's it. So thanks, everybody. Hope you're enjoying your summer already. Uh, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, until next week, on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. And we'll catch you then on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. 